Hello friends, welcome and or welcome back. Today we are going to be discussing Sinless Sins by Josiah Bancroft. Um, if you have not read it and you don't want to be spoiled, we'll have a few minutes where we talk about our non-spoilery thoughts. But if, unless you're like Monty and you don't care to be spoiled, then just keep on, keep on. <laughs> so I'm going to let my lovely co-host for this month introduce themselves starting here. Okay. Um, hello, I'm Becca from Becca in the Books. I always, I'm just, I'm just not good at beginnings of live shows or ends. Um, <laughs> I'm Becca from Becca in the Books. I read a lot of grimdark fantasy, epic fantasy, fantasy romance, smut. Like my favorite books are, oh God, Crescent City for the fantasy romance, like Never Night, Red Rising, specifically Golden Sun. Um, yeah. Those are a few of my faves. <laughs> Sanderson, Sanderson, of course. I know. I was almost like, "Come on now, girl. Oh, oh my god, where's the Sanderson and the Hob? Come on now." <laughs> no, you are. <laughs> forget Robin Hobb. Like she's been reading her for a year and a half. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm Cody from Cody's Book Corner. I read a lot of the same stuff that Becca just listed, apart from the smut and the romance. I'm more so just an epic fantasy kind of gal. I also do love a thriller and a horror and anything a little bit weird or anything nonsensical. Um, so I'm sure we'll get into that in this discussion. But yeah, those are, that's what I usually tend to read. But my favorites are Sanderson and Hobb, as mm -hmm. mentioned. Hi, Chanel. Hi, Wilma. Yeah, I will never read the book, which I always hear. So, you know, we appreciate the support, I guess. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> Just here for the funsies. OK, cool. Um, so let's see, uh, y'all know who I am, at least you should, and if you don't, you'll learn by the end, I guess. Um, so quick, we're going into spoiler free, so you're good for right now. How would you summarize Sinless in? What would oh, you say about it? Mario. It's Mario, but like historical Mario. <laughs> okay, so like, right, when you start a Mario game, okay, Bowser comes in. And he picks up Princess Peach and he takes her away to the big scary castle. And oh, then Mario has to go through all of these different themed lands, defeating a boss at the end of every land to get to the next level to eventually get to the scary castle to rescue Peach. And that's what this book is. So, like, Steampunky <laughs> yeah. and reads like Agatha Christie. Yeah, in one. I never realized that before, but it's exactly that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely like questy, but like, there, like boss battles, quests, and each each floor yeah. has one of these things that he these obstacles that he has to overcome. <laughs> okay. First of all, Monty, very happy I didn't read this. Who is Mario? <laughs> I that the description is better than the book. Oh, <laughs> historical Mario is so accurate. <laughs> um, so I could definitely see that. Like I would say it's extremely light fantasy like the mm. literary fantasy is pretty accurate because the fantastical element is really just that it's in another world and maybe like the mechanical arm bits but I don't, that's more sci-fi than i would even say fantasy because i feel like it has a pretty clear pretty clear you know explanation um single pov i feel like it's very easy to read um, I would say it's a good book for beginners because very like low barrier to entry because there's not very much going on there. Um, there's no magic system, at least not that I've we've seen in the first book. Um, and then we follow characters like extremely naive. He is like a child, like a, an adult child. Yeah. Um, and you see him become a little bit more cynical and jaded. Yeah. Like, as as the thing go on and you watch him like level up throughout the story um, he's so british it almost gave me like hugh grant to ends up being martin freeman by the end that was just how i had him pictured in my brain i see that mm -hmm. i definitely see that it is beginner friendly and the audio is very good i listened to the entire audio this morning um i recommend it the audio is very nice uh, and it's not that long either. So let, before we get into people who have read it, if you have read it, um, what were your ratings? 
I give it three. I like I'm thinking three point five, so I'm kind of not sure as well. Yeah, I'm also gonna be giving it a three. <laughs> But that's good for you because you give everything two stars. So if it's three stars, that means it was good. That means it's good. <laughs> it was good. It was enjoyable. I was entertained. Um, and that's kind of it. But okay, so everybody's in the three stars. So we got three stars, four stars. Okay, Yvonne, what was the thing that gave it like a extra the extra star? 3.5. Would you continue on with the series? I've heard that book two gets better, so I'm gonna try mm -hmm. book two. Um, for me it's just my enjoyment was very dependent on the theming of the floor so like the entire fourth floor not interested did not yeah. enjoy that setting but I liked floor two and three so I enjoyed those sections more and at the beginning I was trying to get on board with the writing style just because it's not what I expected and also um, I didn't love him as a character and I'm not sure that I, I do yet hmm. that's fair week for I must have dodged a bullet. No one hated it, which mm. seems to be a first. I think here that's a first because I'm usually hating it, but <laughs> I gave it three stars. So speaking of the floor and like, what I guess one thing I could say about the writing that I appreciated was that uh, I could really picture each of the floors. Mm. They were all very different from each other, and like the vibes were very different. Do you have a favorite of the floors that we visited? I liked the parlor. I thought that was a cool idea. Man and I was find out later about why certain things had to be done. Oh, that was really good. He's definitely plotted this very cleverly. There's things from the beginning that definitely have an impact at the end that you didn't necessarily expect to. Um, so I'd say the parlor is twisty. I like it. I like the parlor the most myself because I, and you didn't even realize as much, at least until you got to the third floor, how many things, like was it real or was it part of the show? Mm -hmm. Not only the areas in the rooms were the show, but it's, it, when we got to the end, he was like, oh, you think I could do this? I was like, oh, wait, the whole floor is the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did also enjoy the second floor. I think it was the most chaotic of them, which I really liked, and I really liked the <coughs> concept of it, but I did also really like the third floor as well, which was- I like the relationship um, with, what's his name, Toro? Mm -hmm. The, 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 the giant? I'm like, well, hold on. Is he a giant or is he just a large man? It was never very clear. Yeah. It was an actual giant or not. <laughs> and like the parallels between Sinlin and his friend and like what they'd gone, they'd gone through to get there. I like that. Oh, the second one is multi-POV. Interesting. That is very interesting. I'm, I'm curious about who the other POVs would be. Yeah. Um, Maybe the rest of the people at the end. Because they're still in on spoilers. Yeah. Okay, I see. Okay. I think I probably would read the second book and then decide from the second book whether or not I would continue with the series. Because I was yeah. an easy read, and I do appreciate an easy read here and there. Let's see. People, are you going to be continuing? I should have the main character. I will say I liked him a lot more at the end than at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, I'm like, you can't be this naive. Like, there's no way. It's kind of like when people who grow up in really small towns and villages go to a city for the first time. <laughs> yeah. And he just had all his little facts and, like, little things from the book. And also, I noticed how, like, towards, like, in part three, we shifted from all the chapters starting out with, like, um, a quote from Every Man's Guide to the Tower of Babel to switching to, what is it called? Um, Every Man's Tower, One Man's Travails by T. Zimmer. Yeah. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. good. So you wrote your own guidebook about what's actually going yeah. on here. Okay. I just want to know why he ever thought that going to that tower was a good idea for a honeymoon. Like, nothing mm -hmm. about even what he thought it was sounded like a good idea for a honeymoon. Well, for him to know so much about the tower, I don't know why from the beginning he was like, let's get, yeah, go off and find a dress yourself. She's wearing a red hat, so I'll be able to find her. <laughs> well, I have a question about Mario. So I'm, I think I'll save that one for the the um, spoiler spoiler free section. Oh no! Well, I think we've already gotten through all my spoiler free questions. So mm -hmm. all right, people, well, right here, we're going into spoilers. Do you think Mario got lost on purpose to go have an adventure? I don't think so. 
It seems like she really loves the dude. I don't know, but that's from his perspective from the flashbacks. I don't know. I didn't even think about that, to be yeah. honest. Because what happens is she walks away and he's standing there and somehow somebody steals the luggage and he runs after them. He's like, I, he wasn't even running that long. He was running for a paragraph. He didn't even realize what direction they went back to. So my thing would be she would just stay where she was and he would come back to her. And he, mm -hmm. I waited there for two days. Mm -hmm. And nothing happened. And then she immediately went to like a boarding house. Like when we got had a little one little section from her, she immediately went to a boarding house. She immediately did this, 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 and the third. And somehow she ended up doing all the things that she was doing. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't you just wait where you were? Because he obviously wouldn't find you at a hotel. He wouldn't think to look for you there. Mm. And she was like, I thought that she was going to find her back. So I thought she just kind of wandered off because the whole, like, throughout the outdoor market bit and the parlor especially, it's got a very, like, trippy, confusing, like, surreal kind of vibe to it. Like, it's almost, especially outside in the market, like, it's intentionally there to confuse people. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it moves, right? Like, it kind of, like, rotates, doesn't it? So nothing's ever in the same spot as mm -hmm. well. My big question about this book is, does anybody else just get the vibe that he doesn't actually care about her that much, especially at the beginning? And you do get some flashbacks later on where, like, you get a bit more depth to their relationship, I guess. But at the beginning, he's like, yeah, we got married because I thought she was a good match. And that's pretty much all he says about her. So it's just like a lot I of... I didn't buy it. it especially not for her, because, like, she, obviously he was like... She was younger and prettier or whatever. And there wasn't like a scandal the reason that they got together until we got the little one chapter where she's like, oh, I just want to get back to San Luis so bad. Mm -hmm. Thomas, you know. And then at the end, he's like, I'm realizing that I'm more, not in love, but I'm holding on to the idea of her. She's no longer really a person to me. She's just like this thing that's driving me forward. Like I have to get her back. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't that it. cynical. I was just like, yay, they're in love. It was cute. The piano scenes, they're definitely going to find one another. <laughs> The piano scenes were cute. Yeah, um, I didn't realize that he was high at the end. He was yeah. like, she walked up behind him. I'm like, she's right there. She was carrying on with the mm -hmm. guy all the time. And I think I struggled a lot with bits like that because I don't handle, like, I, I don't like magical realism. I don't like fabulism or anything kind of like that. So all of these trippy scenes, whether it be in the theming of the flaws and how it's intentionally trying to confuse you and you don't know what's real or whether he is actually high, just confused my brain and I just could not handle it. <laughs> Those are my favorite parts. I like <laughs> the weird. <laughs> That's kind of I like, why I the, like the second floor the best because I like it was a it was like a fever dream. You, I just yeah. never really knew what was happening in the parlor like the whole time. And then like Edith coming back and yeah. Oh, okay, this is interesting. Yeah. Let's talk about Adam and was it Fawn Gill? What did you think about Adam? From the first time we met him too when we were reintroduced to him a little bit later. I liked him to start off with, but then by the time we got to the fourth floor, I started stopped being as invested in it. I did like him as a character and I liked that it brought that thread back of him right at the end from like where we'd met him as one of the first characters we'd met at the beginning. Um but I don't know if I liked that kind of plot twist, but I just didn't like the fourth floor at all, really. Yeah, I feel you on that. I feel like there was supposed to be some like shocking like revelations and I just wasn't as invested at that point with Adam and stuff. Especially were you surprised it was Adam? Hmm? Did you guess? Were you surprised that it was Adam who had told the commissioner? Um, oh. Yeah, but also no. It was one of those reveals where I'm like, eh, makes sense. Like, it, didn't, it wasn't really shocked or, yeah. I was surprised, honestly, by the time that we were at this floor that Sinlin is still being so open and honest and sharing. I'm like, you and Adam may have a truth right now, but he's already shown you that he is like not mm -hmm. truthworthy, and he's already told you that like he'll do whatever for his sister, and so you are literally gifting him the solution to all his problems by sharing everything that's going on. Like he kept asking about it. I'm like, you don't see that this is like, before I knew that it was Adam, I still thought it was suspicious the way that it, the way that he was um, sharing so much with him. I'm like, you supposed to have been 
a little bit more street smart by the time you got to this floor, which is the whole reason like Fawn Gill like scammed you into getting up here. I think that I, I can't remember what it was specifically now, but there were a couple of instances where I thought that there was something up with him. I didn't know specifically what it was, but I, I had a feeling that he wasn't being truthful because of some clues in the text. But I feel like with this book and especially with how badly I deal with stuff like magical realism and stuff, because I just can't comprehend it. Um, when I read a book like this, it's the same as like the Hazelwood by Melissa Albert on Night Film. Mm -hmm. I kind of just roll with it. So mm. I stop trying to predict what's going to happen and like being shocked. Like when something happens, I just kind of accept it because I'm used to accepting all of the weird stuff that's already happened. Yeah, I feel you on that. Let's see. I also thought she ran off. Um, I love Sin Lina. We want to talk about the artist in just a second because I'm just like that whole thing. I'm like, mm. hmm, I'm freaked. Uh, I don't care for Mario at all. Oh, okay. So we get more about Maria because, like, the little one section we got, I was like, she's she has been busy. She's been doing a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I like Adam, but I'm not too sure about him now. One thing that didn't make sense to me was <clears throat> when he was on, well, he was in the baths. His friend, they came up with this elaborate plan. I didn't really believe like our closest friends. They were the friend would just like sacrifice himself into being a hot or whatever, so that Simlin could literally just walk on by mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a bit too convenient i feel like something to do with that is going to come back up in the second book and it's going to make reference to it probably oh yeah. you know what? hold on i want to say because the third book is called the high king yeah there you go oh so maybe that it come because it just it was just, it seemed too easy too convenient it just happened like yeah you say, oh, some, Thomas and I were aren't close but like literally every single day y'all had spent like all day together nobody's on the vibe yet. Mm -hmm. I feel like every character has a secret agenda. Like some of them we already know, others we don't yet. So anyone that's returning, I'm always going to be immediately sus off. Yeah. I feel like every time that like the narrative that we exposition, he's telling us like you can't trust anyone in the tower. No one is what they believe. But then because we follow Sinla, who is such a trusting character, it like wipes it all the way again. And then we start trusting everyone again. And then we realize that like you should not have from the beginning because we already told you not to trust anybody. Yeah. Like there's something with Edith. Don't trust Edith. Which one's there's Edith? Something. The arm. The uh, one that we in the parlor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The the fires. Why did the fires have to be kept going? Because that's something that I actually really enjoyed about this book. Because they are all making. Is it electricity that they're making? So it's essentially the Tower of Babel is an engine. Yeah. And it starts at the bottom with the whizzy beer things. And then you mm -hmm. stoke fires on the second floor. And then the mm -hmm. third floor, I think it's the steam, which steam. is the release of all of the fires. And then the fourth floor was something else. That and it's all made, it's a big generator, essentially. Yeah. But then it's like, what is the generator for? Or what That's is what I want to know. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Um, to warn the bass on the next floor. So it's all these things are connected, but then... You, I think somebody mentioned in the that like you don't know anything beyond really the fourth floor. No. Mm -hmm. All the guys like really just cover like the beginning bits, but you don't really know anything like what's going on beyond that. And of course, Miss Mario would just happen to be one floor up, like mm -hmm. from where from where everything is going on. Now, what do y'all think about the artist, Mr. Ogier? Over? I don't know. Oh yeah, because mm -hmm. he said it's the the key to the whole tower. With the bottom floors, at least the ones that we've covered being an engine, I wonder if it's going to be some sort of like giant robot or something like that. Because you know, they said like the clouds cover the top half of the tower, so you don't even know what it looks like or anything going on up there. No one knows how many floors there are as well. There was a bit where somebody swore there was 47, but somebody else swore that there was 39. Mm. And then, like, they had clearly had very advanced technology. Because remember when they were in like the cage, and like the little spider thing came out, and was like repairing the walls, and like, yeah, I was like, what? What is happening here? Mm. Then, hmm? um, the artist as well. They said that he was a fake. So I'm like, well, who was the original guy? Well, he's the original a original guy. hundred years old. Yeah. And like if everyone knew he was a fake, like you know the the count guy, it also went to him because he he painted Maria, and he's like she's gonna be my wife now or whatever. I'm like 
when the whole thing came out, he's like, oh, I'm going to, what do you say? I'm going to help you find your husband. And then Cam was like, oh, I've already found her husband. Like, you're not going back to him. I need him eradicated. He needs to go. So I'm like, how many people are in on it? But at the same time, they're saying, like, pe- people want Thomas Hiddleston to stay alive. I'm like, how are so many people invested in him? And he's not even been in the tower that long. Or he's, like, seemingly a nobody. Hmm. Oh, it's a conspiracy. It goes all the way to the top. And there'll be a conspiracy. What is the top? That's what I want to know. Where is the top? How long do we till we get to the top? And like, how is it him becoming a pirate captain? <laughs> Whatever. It's just the most unexpected thing. I was like, yeah. what? Yeah. Like you could I'm throw like, out any theory as to what's at the top, and like we could be right because it's so absurd. It could be aliens. It could be magic of some kind. <laughs> we don't know. And then even like them being siblings or somehow like I don't understand. I don't understand how the what was it the red hand and Edith. I'm like, are they siblings in this like mechanical thing or like they actually siblings? Yeah. There's something iffy. It's got to be more to this painting than just like the little description that we've gotten. Well, they said like, it's I don't a want to. Isn't it just a painting of a girl with a balloon stood on the edge of a lake? But even if it was the key to the whole tower, how would it only end up on the third floor? I feel like somebody more powerful would have it if it was if that's what it was. And also, I shouldn't have it. Because he says that it's his greatest masterpiece, but then we found out that he wasn't actually artist. So unless he stole it and brought it down to the third floor, because nobody would think to look for it there. I think I don't even understand how big the floors are because he was like. The council, the, the guy had been looking for him all these months that he had been working literally one floor up on the as the port authority or whatever. I'm like, he he, he was in the same place every day. Mm. How hard were you looking? If you didn't find it? I did find it very hard to like envision how big this thing actually was because like the third floor has a massive lake on it, but also how deep is the lake? Yeah. If it's on the third floor of a tower. <laughs> But then even they were like, it's like a quarter of a mile. Remember he was like from the ground to the, from like the ground floor to the like entrance of the basement was like a quarter mile walk up. So I'm like, I'm assuming very, very like tall. And then aside from the lake going down, there's also the massive spire in the middle of it that goes so far up that he couldn't really see the top, could he? Yeah. Like if you look on the map, you can kind of see how it Me looks. just realized that I didn't know there was a map in this book. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh no, there it is. I was going to say there isn't, but I found it. Wow, this is fascinating. <laughs> Helfia. That name is a little sketchy. Um, but like, also, who puts a spire in the middle of a tower? Like, What's the reason that that's there? Oh, they look like they're holding the tower up because there's one on every floor in the same place, apart from the parlor, but that's floor to ceiling mm-hmm. room. I just assumed it was like some kind of part of the machine, you know, takes the water up to the, be steamed and then up to the baths and then from there up again. I'm Googling the synopsis of the Army of the Sphinx to like, <laughs> see what, <laughs> I think it took as part of the magic, like Mary Poppins is back. There's more than it appears. Mm. Apparently the tower is like a thousand years old. So we don't know who built it, who made it, when it was made, how big it is. Yeah, what it contains. I think there's something. Is it the cover for the arm of the? No, was it? What's the fourth book called? The destruction, the fall. The of the mm-hmm. I think something about the cover of that is what makes me think that it's something to do with like big steampunky robot things. Oh. I mean, the cover book too is like a big hand. Checking out the covers now. <laughs> Forced into a life of piracy, <laughs> Simon and his eclectic crew. Um, hold on. Where did it go? Come on now, Goodreads. Don't fail me now. Okay. The Tower of Babel is proving to be as difficult to re-enter as it was to break out of. Forced into a life of piracy, Sinlin and his eclectic crew are struggling to survive aboard their stolen airship as the hunt to rescue Sinlin's lost wife continues. Hopeless and desolate, they turn to a legend of the Tower, the mysterious Sphinx. 
But help from the Sphinx never comes cheaply. And as Sinlin knows, depths aren't always what they seem in the Tower of Babel. Time is running out, and now Sinlin must choose between his friends, his freedom, and his wife. Does anyone truly escape the Tower? Everyone said that you don't get out of the Tower, alive at least. Hmm. Which is, even people who we've seen leave the Tower, like Edith, who had to get, who got put out. Um, Adam, who technically got like burned and like put out of the parlor. Mm -hmm. uh, the friend who was gonna leave and go home to his wife for 16 years. No one has successfully left the tower. I was surprised at how many people there just live there. Because the way Sunlin went on this, like, why would you go on a honeymoon to somewhere where nobody else has been at all? Like, where's he getting his recommendations from? He just bought a guy guy a place that no one's ever been to and was like, let's go there. Are you not it's suspicious that he's ever been to it? And then we learn the people who wrote the guide would have never been. He's like, yeah. I have this way now. Because mm -hmm. it's useless. Uh, so I'm wondering, like, what is the Sphinx? Is the Sphinx like another floor, like a ruler of one of these floors? Because all the different floors like have like different governments and whether it's bureaucracies, dictatorships, ringdom, whatever. So I'm like, ooh, it has to be something that transformed. Edith and the red mm -hmm. hammer or red hand <laughs> into whatever it is they are now. And she's like, oh, sometimes you just run out of steam and it just like stopped her super cyborg arm just like stopped working. Mm. Oh, so more cyborgs the further up we get then I'm assuming. I'm excited. I'm going to continue. I wasn't sure at the beginning of this and now I'm like, yeah, I'm going to continue. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I hate about three stars is like I never have that much to say. Yeah. <laughs> all of us here three stars and we're all just like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like it feels very, not necessarily surface level, but the book feels very much like a kind of adventure story. But with the people that I've seen, like I know Elliot Brooks really likes the series. I think it's going to be a lot better plotted than you know until you get further into it. Exactly. Yeah. Like what we used to say about Hob. <laughs> and like yeah. people self published. Oof. This was self published and then it was picked up, but. At that point, a couple of books had already been out. Um, but I think there's more of a cohesive plot from like the second book. Because mm -hmm. even though he's been trying to find her, now he's got like a crew and he's Thomas Mudd. And somebody, um, I'm going to see if I can find a comment because somebody commented something interesting on my vlog. I found it weird the woman blackmailing in the, in the guy selling stamps or crossing out words in books. Selena mm -hmm. has so much influence to have like only been in the tower for so long or he like was he also was influencing so many things yeah I'm so curious at the scene so far I've just been hinted about him and I feel like he has something to do with all this can you imagine being an actor and someone murdering people in the scene and like they actually kill them because I was like, is I, I was constantly asking myself, is this part of the show? Is this yeah. is this, mm. is this part of this? That was just the entire running monologue, like the entirety of the second floor. Is this part of the show? Mm -hmm. It was also interesting because, like, I didn't know, like, how we found out the nurses were actually actors as well. Like, you never knew, especially because you got thrown into it. Like, whether anyone in the scene. Was that like was professional and part of mm -hmm. like the running of the floor, or whether everybody was just playing a part? Yeah, and it seems like everybody because even the commissioner was a part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, as soon as you walk in, you get thrust into a part. I'm like, why do I have to pay for this? Like, <laughs> you know, the thing through me, I have to pay to play a part in the show that mm -hmm. I can't even enjoy. And then, and then even Adam was it Adam who thought that he'd worked for them, but then he was mm -hmm. just playing the part of spying on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, even the little spies are actors, the commissioners, all those people are actors. And it's like, maybe the whole thing with Eve was one big scene. The whole going up into the cage, maybe all of that was a scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is why I don't trust Edith, because she's not saying about her arm and the brotherly thing, and then also this. I'm like, hmm. The last time I saw her, she, she's like, this is my sixth show, but like, what we're doing could still be the show. Mm -hmm. And then she got branded 
but people say you get brain and you get thrown out of the tower. Well, Adam is clearly in the tower. She's also clearly back in the tower. So like, does that mean, what does that mean? Or it's like, you're like in the next level of like known things once you get the brain. Um, somebody commented and said that the first book is very much Senlin's journey to becoming a man of the tower. The second and third books explore the tower and also have multiple perspectives. The first mate in particular. And the first mate is Iron, Erin, Irene, the Amazon. Oh, mm. the Amazon, yeah. I like her. Mm. I don't like how she was always referred to as the Amazon, though. Like, even after he knew her name. But even now, when I'm like, I said her name, we're all like, he's the Amazon. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could have said one of the only prominent female characters in the book and I would have got it because there's only her and Edith. I don't know whether you count Maya because like she's just an idea at this point. You don't really mm -hmm. see much actually of her. But what I will say is that in the stories that the artists were telling about her, she seems a lot different to Senlin's memories of her. Even mm -hmm. the little one little section we got of her, she seems very different. Like she seems more like of a, a like a full person, except the one who's talking about her as a student. When he was talking about her, her his time with her as his student, and then him like running to catch her before she left the train. I was like, okay, I'm starting to buy into it. So like at the beginning, I was like, because I'm like, we already lost her. We on page twelve, and you're you and your wife are lost. Like the, the summary is the first twelve pages. I'm like, so what are we doing over here? I was very unclear where the Edith is the first man. I thought this one was me. Yeah, because Edith is was the first mate of the original ship and she said she didn't want to be the captain. So I think she's still the first mate now. I will yeah. say that the last 50 pages of this, I just wasn't enjoying it anymore by that point because I just did not like the fourth floor or care about what was happening. So my memory of like those last pages is not strong. Yeah. Edith is the first mate. And then um what is her name? Violetta is like the watchman or whatever who's like bouncing around. Um, and I think Irene is like a, a Aaron, Aaron, I don't know. She has like a, a little bit of a different role. You really like Adam's sister. Me too. I feel like she's going to have a bigger role. Going forward, especially because so many men were like chasing after her, and she was very treasured by those that like were keeping Adam under her thumb or whatever. Um, so everybody seems to be like, you know what? Now I'm going to read at least the army things to see what's going to happen. All right. Now, this I don't think it's much longer either. It's only about 30 pages longer, so it's not. Hey, big that's all right. I recommend the audio. If you, I don't know if you tried it, but the audio is really good and it's really like easy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like the audio. I and might the, try it. Then. Like the audio for book one was maybe ten hours. Mm -hmm. No, it was fourteen hours. So, and I listened a little bit significantly faster than once. <laughs> <laughs> I got through. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, no burning questions, I think we have wrapped up and summed up Sin and the Sins by Josiah Bancroft. If you are a person who likes to wait until series are finished to pick it up, I would say now is a great time to start because the uh, fourth and final book comes out in November. All the books are of a relatively similar length, so they're not too long. Um, very little buried entry, very beginner friendly way more intrigued so hearing good things about the sequel thank you to becca and cody for joining me on the live show that was seemed like it was never going to happen <laughs> together and then <laughs> all right thank you all and we'll see you next time bye bye, bye.